Today we have Dr. Charles Babouche and Dr. Camilla Kilbane to talk with us. Um, I do just want to say they're going to introduce themselves. They will be talking about some products, but we always want to make it clear they are not endorsing a product or trying to sell anything. Um, these are all things that you can get either through Amazon or your local medical supply store. So these are items that are easily obtainable. So I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Thank you both for joining us today. All right, let me share my screen. So let's see if I can hold on. I show something. So I hope everybody can see my slides. Um, my name is Camilla Kilbane. I am a movement disorder neurologist at University Hospitals Cleveland Medical Center, where I run the Parkinson's and Movement Disorder Center. And I'm an associate professor of neurology at Case Western Reserve University. And it's my pleasure to be back talking with the PMD Alliance. I always really enjoy these um, Zoom meetings. Um, and so today we're gonna talk about adaptive living in Parkinson's disease. And I'm gonna introduce my co-speaker shortly. So um, we'll hear about Dr. Babush in a minute. But what we kind of set out to do or what Dr. Babush set out to do was to find out what assisted devices are available that can make life easier and better when you're living with Parkinson's disease. And so what Dr. Babush came to me with was that he had developed a survey and he looked at what um, kind of assisted devices did people feel were most useful and of most assistance to people with Parkinson's disease. Um, and if anybody in this Zoom never, so this Zoom was a um, survey was actually available with the PMD Alliance earlier this year, but we are going to share a link to the survey in the chat if anybody else would um, like to take the survey also after this um, Zoom, um, because we're aiming for a thousand people to respond, okay, to get some big numbers and so we can uh, publish these results. So the survey includes questions about what devices are people using? What do they find helpful? What don't they find helpful? How can we improve knowledge about these gadgets? That doesn't just mean for you all living with Parkinson's. That's also for me as a Parkinson's provider, um, you know, I work with physical therapists and occupational therapists. They know a lot more than physicians know about these sort of assisted devices. And I think this is something that we as physicians also need to be educated more on. Hopefully we can, um, this information can make it um, inform us on what's going to be helpful for development of other assisted devices in the future. And also, maybe sometimes you just don't know about some of these devices and so how they can help you. Um, we would also love to hear from the audience today. If you have something that you want to mention at the end of this talk that we didn't talk about, obviously, we can't cover all of the devices. There's so many out there. We're kind of giving you a little snapshot of them. Um, but if you do have something that you want to share, um, you can put it in the chat and we will go through it um, at the end of the talk. And like we said, we're not, this is not, we're not making any money from showing these um, devices. These are devices that are commercially available in most, most retail stores. So, you know, I started looking a little bit at some of the, like the 271st um, surveys we had from the PMD Alliance of so people who've actually gone through the survey that, that we developed. And as I said before, the occupational therapists are probably the experts in this, in this domain about what kind of assist the devices, how can you adapt your life um, to, you know, best live with Parkinson's disease. And it turned out that about, you know, 85% of people who um, filled out the survey had not seen an occupational therapist. Um, and so there's probably, you know, that might have something to do with where each person is in their disease course, but there's certainly, you know, probably a lot of knowledge that is not being spread out to the community. And hopefully this talk will help kind of um, start that um, inform spread of information. So from the survey, this, the, and again, Dr. Bush, I'm not stealing your thunder, so I'm just saying a couple of things here. What were the uh, gadgets that most people found useful? Shower grab bars were one of the things they found most helpful. An elevated um, seat um, of, of the commode. And then jar openers were some of the things that people found the most helpful from the initial survey. Um, 
brushes and long handle combs. Maybe people didn't find ads helpful. And then people were quite neutral to some things that I thought people were going to find quite helpful, which include shoehorn. I think that's a very useful to tool. Um, help with shoe remover. Um, key holder, I also thought would be something that most people uh, would find helpful, as well as some and a device to assist with buttons. So with that, I am going to introduce um, Dr. Chuck Babush. Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce our expert on assisted devices in Parkinson's disease. So he is a person living with Parkinson's disease, and he's passionate to share his knowledge about what assisted devices, devices he has found helpful. Um, and his main goal is really to work on improving quality of life for people with Parkinson's on an everyday be, uh, day basis. And so Dr. Babush is gonna kind of give a little bit more introduction about himself as well. Um, and then I will come back in a minute. Hold on. Thank you very stop. much. I'm gonna stop share, take it away. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm sitting in a very sunshiny room in Cleveland, Ohio, where believe it, October 11th, the temperature is what? Uh, 67. 67. But we had a fundraiser, a 24 hour uh, ordeal, which my oldest son put together. And he felt that it was necessary to do not a walkathon, not a marathon, but a 24 hour walk. Because after all, those of us who have had that label made, and are told that we have Parkinson's, it keeps going 24 hours a day. And the only time you get any peace and quiet from it is when you go to sleep. So this past weekend, um, they put forth this walk in our community in the greater Cleveland suburban area. And they uh, traveled 70 miles on a continuous walk over a 24-hour period, which included rain, thunder, lightning, um, snow, uh, everything that you can think of, which goes along with the uh, description of Cleveland. If you don't like the weather, hang around for 24 hours for sure, it'll change. And we were able to receive some very generous gifts from the community, friends, uh, relatives, et cetera, of over $100,000 for a special fund, which my wife and I had established after I had deep brain stimulation earlier this year. Um, and it has truly changed our lives, principally me, but it has uh, really made a difference in how we go about our business on a daily basis. Now, in my past life, when I was really working, I was an oral and maxillofacial surgeon for over 50 years in the greater metropolitan area. And I specialized in a procedure uh, which involved the use of dental implants to reconstruct people who had lost some or all of their teeth and couldn't be or didn't want to be treated with conventional dentures or bridges, et cetera. And that was extremely rewarding um, type of work. And then what transpired is um, that in 2012, I was diagnosed with essential tremor, which my kids had picked up on and my wife had picked up on, all knowing that something was wrong because I will describe it in not scientific terms. I had a lot of shake, rattle, and roll. And um, that's become kind of a tagline with things that we deal with, shake, rattle, and roll. That progressed over several years to 2017, where I was diagnosed with early stage Parkinson's disease. And then in 2023, January 
fifth to be exact, um, I had deep brain stimulation, which reversed and has controlled my tremors and my dyskinesia. And I can eat a normal meal with normal utensils. Um, I still have a little trouble in the morning, which is our most difficult time, ladies and gentlemen, um, getting dressed because you wake up from hopefully a good sleep and you have the lowest level or off period that you're going to run into in the day, the uh, rest of the day, uh, until your particular medication kicks in and is a benefit. So during the pre-deep brain stimulation days, um, I really found myself to be at a disadvantage. And I noticed that uh, there was no kit. There was no group of instruments. There was no diagnosis by our caregivers, either at home or professionally through the medical clinics that we were being taken care of under. And um, you want to make sure, if at all possible, that you are taken care of um, by a neurologist who has movement disorder uh, capabilities and training. Um, and that should be uh, a very important aspect of what we're doing. So let's take a look at some of the ideas. Parkinson's disease, Parkinson's disease is a degenerative disorder associated with tremor, stiffness, and impaired balance and coordination. Now, this biggest impact is <clears throat> early in the day when you first get up, and it affects your breakfast, uh, early appointments if you have to have them, and also how you get dressed. Parkinson's disease is a progressive disease that can have serious complications. You can utilize aids and tools for activities and daily living for Parkinson's and other movement disorders. These ideas that I have and these quality of life um, objects, which I'm going to demonstrate to you and what we did with them, is still open for you to feed in and give us some additional comments. Now, these are all the areas and not limited to these areas that can be affected by Parkinson's and other movement disorders. So you can see it ranges all the way from constipation to dyskinesia to gait and balance. And these are all problems that can take place at one time, or they can be gradually introduced uh, to your body and your mind um, over an early non-severe case. And, um, and this was adapted by a, a review booklet, page 13 of the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Thank you. Next. Every year, the federal government and individuals' families spend $52 billion. As I said, that's B for billion, not M for million. Uh, that's a chunk of money. Uh, and that money is spent on the care for Parkinsonian patients. The amount is projected to double by 2040 to 104 billion. That's amazing. And this disease that we have labeled and is ravishing our body um, is, is something that doesn't have a cure. And I'm not fighting the battle of trying to cure the disease like Michael J. Fox is doing. And he's doing he and his organization are doing magical things. 
And in case you don't know it or you haven't read it, he was actually awarded an Academy Award by the Motion Picture Academy, I believe, handles that, for his work in trying to find a cause and therefore a treatment for Parkinson's or other movement disorders. I am not trying to do that. I just want to make life a little easier and a little better for Ken. Um, movement disorder specialists uh, treat more people with Parkinson's than any other group of professionals. Potential barriers. By not seeking out a movement disorder specialist, there is potential for missing out on quality care for those with TD, because the field of medicine today and surgery is included in it, is very complex. I remember when I first started in practice more than 50 years ago, if we wanted to look up a new drug, it came in a book called the PDR, Physician's Death, Death Reference. And that was about maybe that thing. Um, are we showing mm -hmm. about that thing? And um, it had every drug that was available for sale and approved by the FDA listed in there. Now, I believe that they have finally gone to a second volume every year. And so there's a lot of drugs out there doing a lot of things. One might also find delays in appointment availability with a specialist as well as the need to travel longer distances, of course, at a greater cost out of your pocket. So let's take a look at my technician is having trouble with the projector. Here. There we go. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, some of you may think this is a little ridiculous, but I I look at this very seriously. This is kind of a little scenario that I put together based on what we find with average patients and percentage of care. And I believe Dr. Camille uh, put up some numbers, 87%. Uh, well, listen. Okay, just pretend this is you on your first visit. Patient is diagnosed with Parkinson. Typical visit to MD. A physician says to him, oh, how are you feeling today, Dr. Babbitt? Oh, not so good. I'm a little stiff. I'm a little slow in getting dressed. I'm just not a happy camper. And I can't do the things that I used to do, uh, which my kids are continually lecturing to me about. Um, Usual answer, new or changed, let's, let's up your dose of your medication and try that for six months and see if that'll help you. Or we have a newer drug out and that also is supposed to address the items you just talked about. Feeling slow, a little stiff, um, difficulty getting this. Then the patient takes his prescription and a card for his next appointment. And he goes home. And uh, his wife said, what did he say? And he said, well, the doctor didn't say too much. He said, have a cold beer, stretch out on a couch and watch the Browns. I'm sorry if that offends anybody, but that's who we watch here in Cleveland. Win or lose, we still watch the Browns. Um, so what if, you could go to your doctor and he had literature that was made for the patient that he said, here, take this and read this. I want you to be a little bit better informed. And then um, there's a pad about uh, maybe the size of this magazine and it's got duplicate pages and it's like a prescription pad. And there are 10 or 15 or 20 items that the doctor said, listen, we just got input from this thousand person survey. And we think there are 10 items on this list that could help you. And you say, wow, that's amazing. 
uh, what are they? They said, okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Now you have that. You also have perhaps a small TV in that reception room that is kind of orienting the patient to this. Then down in the gift shop from the hospital, because most of these individuals are seen multiple times, so that there's a picture of them. And um, we have these items and you can buy those and we're recommending you take a serious look at it. And that's set up in a little kiosk in the hospital. And I believe there's a national ranking of uh, institutions, hospitals, and that would carry this type of merchandise. And then we would also have a website available. You can go home, you can look it up on the website, and you can order just like you would order from Amazon. Okay, can we flip that over? Thank you. Okay, so we've come up with the name, and I don't know who used this first. If we did or uh, PMD did or doesn't matter. It's a good name, Adaptive Living Devices. Improve your daily quality of life. And what I did is I couldn't find anything. So I started on a campaign of visiting drugstores, pharmacies, big, big box stores, and gadget stores. And I pulled out anything that I think could work for this purpose. And the survey was developed, which I have, in conjunction with university hospitals and then Parkinson's MD, PMD. And based on the workup of our survey, the use of gadgets and tools, we plan to obtain this 1,000 uh, uh, survey response. Now, have many of you watched Shark Tank? Okay, and I have. I'm an avid, dedicated watcher of Shark Tank. And what's the one thing that seems to be a recurring theme on Shark Tank by one individual, Mr. Wonderful? Mr. Wonderful may wear a black suit and a black tie every day, but he's a pretty sharp guy. So he said, how do we know if you put it together that people will come? How do you know that you can get the business out of it? How do you know all these things? So I said, well, we talked to a thousand potential patients and customers and they are very interested. And we had 940 favorable responses based on a one to five answer, one being the most needed object I've ever seen in my life, and five, nah, I don't need that. Um, let's take a look at this reach stick. I was ready to use this as a point. Um, at the reach stick, uh, some of you may be old enough like me um, to remember going to a grocery store and they had a little step stool or they had a reset. And this is like an automatic claw and it can come in different lengths, 24, 30, et cetera, inches. And you can actually reach up on a shelf and get down a, a glass or a jar or a plate. And that extends your reach because not only is it a longer distance, but when you have these movement disorders, you have more difficulty in mobilizing your body. Now, here over to the right, there are two pictures of a stick with little hooks at the end. Now, this is what I would define as repurposing an item. And this is, this is formally called a dressing stick. When you try to tuck in your um, shirt in your skirt or trousers or shorts or whatever you're wearing, it's very difficult for a 
Parkinson's patient to get back there and tuck it into your trousers. So they have what they call a dressing stick. But my wife was very clever in dealing with this. She saw one day that I was playing with this stick, getting ready to photograph it for uh, some demonstrations. And she said, what do you have there? I said, well, it's a dressing stick. She said, I think I can use it. So she's very short. She's five foot, maybe now 4'11", she said. And we have front loading washer and dryer. Well, when you go to that washing load, how many of you with the front loader can reach the uh, washed items easily and remove them from this tight packing they get against the drum? And therefore, um, it becomes a repurposed or dual application dressing stick to tuck in the tail of that shirt or blouse, and also retrieval instrument for your laundry. Now, how many of you are having trouble with a button up um, or buttoning shirts? And uh, I had, that was one of the things that was most frustrating to me. I'm right-handed, so I could get by depending on the day and how long ago my dose of medication was, uh, I could button the buttons on the front of the shirt and I could button the left sleeve, but I had great difficulty in buttoning the left sleeve. Um, I just didn't have the dexterity or the strength to do it. So I started looking at things and I said, wow, you know, they use Velcro for everything else. Why can't we have Velcro instead of buttons? So you see the purple shirt there. Is the camera on me at this mm -hmm. point? Okay. And I put, I had the tailor put Velcro in place of buttons. Now like this. Look at that. There's a shirt with the Velcro. I can put it on and off in under a minute. And I solved the problem with the sleeve just like this, okay? That has been one of the single best things that I've come up with. Now, you also in the first picture on the left can use what's called a button hook. I remember my dad using that on dress shirts. Um, I'm older than a lot of you are. Um, and, um, that goes back a long history. And then the other thing is, how many of you have trouble with zippers on your trousers or your skirt or your dress, uh, moving that zipper up and down? First of all, a lot of zippers are made with plastic and the plastic gets very hot in the cleaning process. And um, therefore, when you get it back from the cleaners, it's very difficult and the maneuverability is shot. So and there is an item called zipper lubricant, comes in a little tube, just like when you're gonna make model airplanes or something. And you can lubricate your zipper that way, or you can take the end of a bar of soap before you throw it out, let it dry out completely, and then slide it up and down on the zipper and it will lubricate it and do a better job. And there's also this physical hook that engages the zipper pull. Uh, this happens to be a very difficult one and I didn't like it, but there are others on the market. Okay, shoe horns. Most people think that shoe horns come just in these two lengths, two inches, three inches, four inches, and they don't. They come all the way up to four or five feet. Uh, the longest I found was about 42 inches. And that has been a God saving um, because I use that in combination with the slip-on shoe, which is way over on the right. 
And that slip-on shoe happens to be manufactured by Skechers. And they have every style in the world. And they're all slip-ons. I heartily recommend it. They're very comfortable. And they have an arch support. They have one now, one style that they make. Um, and you can use it without a shoehorn even because on the back part of the shoe, uh, I don't know if this will show up, um, there is a ledge and that ledge is a built-in shoehorn. So you can just slip your feet in and out of that. And then also in the middle, you see no tie shoelaces. They are plastic and just fit in the eyelets of the shoe and you don't have anything to tie. Next, please. Okay, sponge on a stick. Uh, that's just terrific. This is a long handle. Again, I believe it's about 30 inches and it's a shower sponge. And you soap it up and you can wash your back yourself. Um, and we are investigating if this can be made with a replaceable head. So when it gets grungy and soapy and dirty, you can replace the head. Now, something that was near and dear to my heart was the long handle toothbrush. If you look at the conventional toothbrush in black, the diameter is insufficient to prevent it spinning in your hand because your grip is shot now, okay? And it doesn't matter when you uh, take your medication or what dose you're taking. There are certain things you just can't compensate. So the object is to get a larger diameter toothbrush, which is just a pleasure. These are made by a company called Spinbrush. I believe Procter & Gamble still has it. Colgate still has it, et cetera. And I worked on the original on design of that toothbrush. It's got two AA uh, replaceable batteries. They run for at least six months and they cost 10 to $11. Um, it's, it's just amazing. And most drugstores will carry this and most um, uh, supermarkets. Okay, now this is a tough one. This is um, where a lot of frustration takes place. And again, it deals with the handle diameter and your ability to grip and use it. And what you see on the left picture is a blue and red plastic foam type tube with a hollow inside. And you can take any object, you can take a pen, a pencil, a utensil and, and slide it in and it will grip and then you can slide it out, out to wash it. Uh, these come usually in a, a, to a color and different diameters. These are more, more permanent. Look at the two middle pictures. Those are more permanent handles, but they can be flipped on and off as you see in this one. Now, way over to the right, there are two things that I think are really necessary. You got to stop using small knives because it's just going to frustrate you. I would invest in a very good knife uh, out of Switzerland or Germany. Uh, these may cost as much as $25. We're working on trying to get the price down. And they maintain a sharp edge for a long time. And it's great for cutting roasts and uh, cake and all different types of food. The next item to me is one of the great items. It's a poultry scissor. And it has got a little spring in it so that when you squeeze it, it will rebound. And you can actually cut a chicken up or a turkey with this device. And I don't know about you, but I used to carve our 
18 and 20 pound turkey, I can no longer do that. So this has been a godsend or the chicken that you get from uh, the Penn area, Publix, Costco, whatever. Uh, and it's enough for two meals for two people. You can cut it up in quarters and eighths, warm it up, and that uh, scissors helps greatly. Okay. okay, this is one of my favorite things. This is the first thing that I bought at a store, a hardware store. And this will take um, um, opening bottles and jars, et cetera. And you, I call it a reverse nutcracker because as you see, you can put this around the smallest cap and then you exert your pressure off the back end and you rotate it. And there isn't any jar or any cap that I have not been able to. And it's very inexpensive, uh, under ten dollars, I believe. And then this, the black thing, there's a white handle that extends behind this, and this is where you have a jar where the cap comes around and engages the edge of the glass. And just like a soda can, you lift that off, and again, you gain entrance. And these are just grippers. Uh, they come three in a set and very inexpensive, but they certainly will help you if you don't want to invest in something a little bit more. Okay. As the disease progresses, you may find an increase in these essential tremors or speech difficulty. Although these tools will not diminish the typical side effects, I have found them to be extremely useful in my everyday life, especially when symptoms seem to be most challenging. I invite you not only to try a few of these items, but also encourage you to be open to the unique alternative ways you can utilize these helpers beyond their original intent just like my wife and I have done. <laughs> and I want to show you one last thing because this has been super. This is made by a husband and wife team who trained in um, disabilities of the hand, I think would be the best way to do it. And this is absolutely fantastic. Um, you have a very large handle if you compare this to an average coffee cup or tea cup or whatever. So you can really grip this and it won't spin in your hand because, you know, like, can you hand me one of those cups over there, Jessica? Oh, now look at the difference in the anatomy of the holding. Okay, you can barely get one finger in there. And some of the coffee cups and mugs you can get two fingers in, but it still has a tendency to slip around like this, okay? So, thank you, my able-bodied assistant here. Um, this is a grip that won't let go, and it works. It works, and you see this little stud down here? Look at this little stud down here. Uh, there we are. Now, I don't know if we can demonstrate this against the table but let's say this is a tabletop you put this down and this little stud here prevents tippage okay it does it's not guaranteed but it will re reduce the potential for tippage tremendously and those come in two sizes i think an eight ounce and a 14 ounce and it comes in red and white and I, I use that every morning for my for your morning uh, coffee. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Babush. I'm gonna take over for a little, little bit and yeah. then we're gonna open it for questions. Um yeah. so um I wanted to show a couple of more uh, devices that I found recently that I think could be of 
help. So this is what's called an auto life cane. Um, it's a portable um, device or just a little handle that you can put in your door when you try to exit the car. So getting in and out of the car is often a really problematic issue, right? Because the seat is lower. Most cars, you know, unless it's an SUV where you're sitting really down and deep. Um, and so I thought, thought this was a really brilliant um, device um, that you can kind of bring with you. You could travel with this, right? And you put it just in where the lock of the car, you know, where the door closes. You can just put this little hook. It should, they say it fits with most uh, cars. You can hook it in and then kind of get out of the car and then hook it out, even if you use a taxi or something. So that was something I thought was really um, helpful that I had not seen before. Uh, let me see here why am I not moving forward here let's see there um again key grippers I guess most people didn't find this helpful but I think this would be really really helpful if you have tremor just to give you that better uh, vector a bit better handle of them of the key so again maybe something to think about if you're finding that you're having a hard time getting the key into the keyhole um, Dr. Babush co you know, covered all of you know, the things you can put on pens and so forth, but there are weighted pens that can be very, very helpful and improve handwriting. Um, this gadget on the left, I wonder if I should get myself because I don't like the, the, all the uh, toothpaste that gets smeared on my, on my sink by my kids. So this could be something anybody could think about. But anyways, you just put your, you put your toothpaste in and then it will, you know, and when you put it into this little gizmo, it will just release a little bit of toothpaste. Um, then you will use all of the toothpaste and there won't be any sort of um, uh, wastage or smearing. I thought that was pretty, that was a really fun little gizmo I found when I was um, looking around today or earlier this week. Another thing that I know is a really, really problematic issue is that uh, patients with Parkinson's disease can have difficulty with low blood pressure when they go from seated to standing. And wearing compression stockings is a battle. And I know it is because sometimes they are just really, really hard to get on because they're so tight. Um, and so these are some really nice performance compression stockings that have zippers on the side um, and also have a toe opener. So I thought I would bring this to everybody's attention because I know that getting, and I tend to always recommend these to my patients because I know that it is really, really hard to get this on. And hopefully by doing so, um, you won't be lightheaded. So these were actually some things that came up thanks to the search survey with the PMD Alliance. So at the end of the survey, there was um, a little section where people could add, you know, their own suggestions and things that they had found helpful. And again, hopefully we'll learn something more from all, from all of you here today. Uh, but the couch cane, I thought this was a, this is also a really brilliant idea. So getting up from the same thing as getting up from um, the car, getting up from the couch can be exceedingly difficult because it's soft it's deep, it's low. Um, and so this is something that you can attach at the end of your couch um, and then kind of have there and use to get up. This is a very similar device that you can use both to help get out of bed when you get up and out of bed in the morning to kind of use it as a lever to kind of stand up. And it also can sort of multi um, have multi-purpose use in that it can also sort of be a bed rail, right? So it can prevent you from falling out of bed as well. So I thought these were really great. Uh, let me see here. Um, some of the devices people wanted or recommend or recommended based on the initial survey was, you know, small chairs that could fit under the bathroom sink, for example, so that it was easier to do your makeup, brush your hair, um, you know, tur um, touch turn on lights. Handheld showers was something that people found uh, to be very helpful. And then also touch like touch screen, screen styluses instead of using, you know, your, your fingers to use touch screens. Adaptive clothing. I see in the, in the chat, there are some people who are already aware of some of these brands, but Magna Ready is a clothing brand that uses a lot of magnets. And then both, and there's also many other companies um, like Tommy Hilfiger has a whole adaptive clothing um, um, section, IZ Adaptive and Buck and Buck um, are also some some um, 
uh, clothing companies you could um, check out online if you you know don't want to go to the tailor or some have somebody else um, get to your um, help you with um, uh, making your um, clothing more adaptive. So some useful tech gadgets. We're on a Zoom after all, so we should cover some things that are related to um, technology. So the computer mouse is an awfully frustrating device, right? Because especially if you have tremor, the mouse is going everywhere. You might double and triple click on a lot of things that you don't want to do. So some helpful tips that you can do for the computer mouse. First of all, you can adjust the mouse speed on the computer settings so that the, the mouse is less sensitive. And so that can, even with the mouse that you have now, that could be helpful in making the mouse kind of not as you know, uh, responsive, so to speak. You can also use a um, large trackball mouse, such as the one that's here on the right. This is called the big trackball mouse. Uh, and you see it's much bigger. And then there, you know, the two right and left click um, buttons are far away so that you won't accidentally um, click the, the incorrect one. There are also softwares that you can download, like something like Steady Mouse, for example, um, which are basically softwares that will filter out tremors and unwanted clicks. Um, or there are even anti-tremor adapters that you can use between your computer and your mouse. And then there are also um, mouses that are you know, specifically um, developed for tremor, uh, but they can be rather expensive. A large keyboard can be very helpful. This is an example of a large um, keyboard that also has backlight on it. Um, sometimes people find it really helpful to use voice to text, and you can also use dictation, um, you know, software on your computer, um, so that you can when you write on your computer, and that can be helpful. So somebody mentioned this in the chat, and I think that this is really important too. So. What can you do in the bedroom? Um, especially, as you said, mornings are hard, but it's also hard to turn in bed. And so silk or satin bed sheets can be very helpful in improving nighttime mobility. There is actually also a specific uh, website or company that makes specialized um, bed sheets. They're called comfortlinen.com. Um, and basically they have the satin panel that provide you know, less friction uh, from turning side to side in the middle and then on the edges around they have a more of like a high friction material and um, that kind of help prevent you from slipping off of the edge of the bed when you're sitting at the you know at the edge of the bed getting up in the morning as somebody mentioned on the chat having a night light is really an important thing also um, to ensure safety and um, something we won't cover in this um talk, but that is, you know, other things that are really important for safety include, you know, like home safety alarms. And I, but I think that's kind of a different talk. So we can talk about it if anybody has questions. Well done. So I think that's kind of where we wanted to end. It's about 10 minutes. I saw there were lots of questions and also some great ideas and tips in the chat. Um, so um, Eden, and maybe we can go through some of the questions or maybe some of the other, you know, something we, uh, from the chat or if anybody else wanted to say something, they're more than welcome to. Um, again, if you have some tips that you wanted us to include, you know, that we need to learn about, here's also my email if you want to contact us. Um, I want to thank you for your time. There were um, a lot of there was a lot of information in the chat and some people had asked questions that we were then answered in the chat. So um, as well as people put um, websites and such, we also put the survey link in the chat. So I do encourage you to share, uh, to save your chat. If your chat is open, there's three little dots on the bottom of your chat. If you click on it, you can save your chat that way because there was a lot of good information. But a few things that um, came up that weren't answered um, somebody asked, are any of these devices covered by Medicare or insurance providers or eligible for a health savings plan? So that is a very good question. Um, 
You, you know, I don't think the majority of these would be covered by your insurance. Unfortunately, the way it stands, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think so. A health savings account, I think that would probably be the way that you could potentially um, get some of these, um, some of these, potentially have some of this covered. Um, but yes, I don't think it will be covered by Medicare and the standard ones, unfortunately. I did also want to, if it's okay, I see that in the chat, Kizik shoes are mentioned. And I think they're a pretty pos um, uh, popular brand of um, shoes that are easy to slip on and off. Um, let's see, what else do we have here, Eden? Somebody did ask, and do you know anything about this, that they were told it is not good to have magnetic tops if you have a pacemaker? If you have a pacemaker. Magnets in the top interfere. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, magnets and devices, I mean, are technically not supposed to go hand in hand, right? So it's, um, you know, I would presume that these um, magnets are strength or magnitude much lower that they would, I think this is, has to be more of a theoretical than a real risk. But I think in general, metal and magnets don't go together, right? So maybe it's better to, you know, Think about some of the other Velcro. Use one of the other ones. There's so many other potential ways you could, um, you could use, um, you know, um, assistive clothing that doesn't involve magnets. But I think it's more of a theoretical than anything else. Let's Is see. there a brand yeah. name for the bed assist that doubles as a bed rail on the same side as the comfort cane? Uh, yeah, let me look that up. So, so I will also, <laughs> I'm not endorsing. Um, Amazon. Okay. So I'm not endorsing Amazon, but this happened to be Pro Amazon Prime Day. Okay. So lots of devices were on sale. So I happened to put in Parkinson's assistive devices in my search and a lot of interesting things came up. Um, and so um, let me just find the actual label for the bed. I can probably find that for you. And then I see somebody in this chat does say, you know, it mentions not for pacemakers in Magna. So I think we would just stay away from that if you have a pacemaker or DBS in that case, the same um, the same principle. You should avoid uh, the Magna Ready if you have a DBS. Uh, let me just see if I can find what the name of the bed rail was. I think I honestly just put in bed rail for Parkinson's, uh, but I can see if I can find it. I just wanna make sure people are while you're looking. Somebody had asked about a bike and somebody said, a linker walking biker is great to go around and gives people keeps people independent at um that's so i do want you to look at that bicycle like bike mm -hmm. yeah that's a wonderful bike yeah that's a wonderful bike so i think the one that the bed rail that i had again i don't think it has to be this specific brand okay i think this is just i just took an example um but if you go on amazon um the it's called vive bed rail um, v I V E bed rail. But again, I think if you just put in bed rail for Parkinson's, a lot of things would come up. All right, let's see. There's so many good questions here. I, 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 I love, love that. Some of the things you thought would be really good, you said like people didn't necessarily find value in. Um, were there some things that you're like, I didn't think would be very helpful and yet people really found value in? Yeah, so that that's a good question, and uh, that's a great question. So I think I think the things that they found most valuable were things I really um, kind of were expecting, like jar opener, grab bars, things like that. Um, I did think I actually thought that shoe, anything shoe related, was going to be found to be much more useful. I guess maybe it is because most people are wearing uh, Skechers or Kizik's at the moment, but I really thought that anything related to assistance with shoes um, was going to be um, higher on the, you know, useful. Dr. Babush, do you want to add anything also? Well, I, I think all this discussion is great. And it gives us uh, an idea 
in many instances what people are looking uh -huh. for. So I think that we have a job to do to continually research and bring these to um, patients who can use them. Um, we don't know how yet because we haven't explored beyond what I've shown you. And we did get some items that we played with in the kitchen that were of no value. So we discarded them um, as far as our inventory list will go. Um, but I think uh, there was on Shark Tank a situation where an entrepreneur wanted to present a finding that she had made for the development of a business. And she was a, um, um, a little bit heavy in weight and she had an accident and ended up with a leg amputation. And she had great difficulty finding clothing to wear uh, that was at least compatible with her friend's clothing. She didn't want to look like a scarecrow every time she went out with someone or a group of young people. So she developed a line of clothing called No Limit, which was specifically for amputees. And it boils down to very easy. Uh, she put a zipper in a leg amputated individual and they could get their appliance in and out of the leg by just her doing some measurements. And if they did not inventory that item, they would take a look at a custom piece and see what that potential customer would do with it. I think it's marvelous. But even better than that is, she claims that the VA hospital in her community came to her for help. And she claims that there's some interactions taking place at the present time with Congress, if they ever get back to work again, uh, um, to perhaps take a look at it. Encourage people, keep sending in, do that survey, get that survey. Don't, if you're at home, fill it out and please send it back electronically. Uh, as Dr. Kilbane said, there'll be a link uh, to give you information how to reach, uh, how to reach us. And uh, we're going to try our darndest to make this work. Yeah, we are out of time, yeah. um, but I just want to say they, this has been incredible. Um, we have so many, po so much positive feedback and everything in the chat. Um, I do hope people save their chat um, mm -hmm. because there was a lot of good stuff in it. If you click on the three dots on the bottom, you can save your chat. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Babouche, Dr. Kilbane, for being with us today. This was excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Um, this was really fun and I love how interactive it was and that we really could all learn from each other, right? There are so yes. many things people yes. have all figured out on their own and sharing the knowledge, I think it's really, really important. So have a good I evening. Think, I think you've given the public an opportunity to participate in something that's very important to them. So hats off to PMD. Thank you, PMD Alliance. Bye. Good. Have a Bye -bye. great evening, everyone.